So hello, everybody. Nice to be here. Uh, I'm going to talk about Remedy, where I work. have been working for the past 21 years uh, making video games. Remedy is uh, one of the oldest uh, video game companies in Finland. Uh, I'll talk about Remedy just a bit. I'll talk about our approach into making video games, kind of what is the thinking and philosophy uh, uh, in, in the background. And then as much as I have time, I'll dive into our latest game uh, called Quantum Break. Uh, that came out uh, last May and, and talk about the complexities and challenges of, of creating uh, kind of big uh, uh, entertainment products uh, that, that Quantum Break is not just a game but also a live action show. All right, so let's get started. A bit about our history. So 21 years. We started with a top-down down racing game called Death Rally. Came out uh, 96, and and uh, I came in to write the texts for Death Rally, and I've been at Remedy ever since. Uh, and 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 my role in the beginning, especially then with Max Payne, was to be the writer and and figure out a story into an action game, which back then didn't really exist in action games. The stories were kind of an afterthought in that game genre. And, and we wanted to change that and bring a story in. And, and we made Max Payne, then we made a sequel for Max Payne. Uh, a few years later, there was a Hollywood movie of Max Payne. Not necessarily that good of a movie, <laughs> but, but still a movie. Uh, then we made Alan Wake and, and kind of a spin-off, uh, sequel type of a smaller thing. We've been looking into the mobile, obviously, because it's such a huge thing, especially in Finland. Uh, we did one, well, we did couple, we did Death Rally as a mobile game, and then we did Agents, Agents of Storm. But the current thinking uh, at our end is that we want to focus on these bigger entertainment things and and it was a nice learning learning experience to try out uh, that side of things but currently we have nothing in the works on that and then this year quantum break and 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 currently we have done a big shift for us uh, which is that we are working on two <coughs> different games simultaneously we have two internal teams working on two games because so far, apart for these smaller things, uh, it's always been one huge project for many years, as you can see from the timeline, quite a few years in between. Uh, we are located uh, near here, near the Kumpu, uh, and, and uh, have been growing quite a lot. Uh, we are 16... Uh, uh, nationalities. Uh, in, in, we have 60 nationalities in the team of 130 people these days. Uh, and and uh, our headcount has doubled while working on Quantum Break. Uh, so yeah, that's just kind of a brief introduction. Uh, and forgive me for jumping into a totally different presentation. talking about the games we make. Uh, one thing that I have found really inspiring in making games is that there are so many different areas of expertise in a game company team that you get to work with very, very different people. Pe people from different areas of expertise, coding, and many different areas of coding uh, kind of some of it is mathematics that go way over my head uh, and 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 then some of it is very practical of of scripting certain game sequences uh, there, there there are the graphics 
kind of experts on, on graphics artists really of, of many kind, 3D and 2D graphics. Uh, we have audio people uh, from movie and TV side and special effect people uh, and, 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 and writers such as myself. And, and all of those different areas need to come together to work on the same thing and find the, you know, learn to speak the same language, which isn't always a given thing. Uh, it, it, people are approaching it from different points of view, which can be a huge richness, but it's sometimes challenging to see the other viewpoints as well. But that, that's what makes it interesting and that's what makes it for me personally, something that it feels like I'm learning every day, uh, even after 21 years. The other interesting thing is, of course, that games are very technology driven. And the technology is going forward really fast. Certain things that in a previous game were completely impossible to create now suddenly are an option. So, so it's always prototyping, always inventing new things, new, new tools to make this content and, and then this content. And, and it, it keeps it fresh. It's never like, well, we know how to do this. Now let's just repeat it and, and do the same thing. It's always, now we have these new opportunities, new challenges. So, so it, 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 it can be daunting, but, but it can also be really, really exciting. So at Remedy, how we look at games, we, we see them as entertainment. Uh, and, and, and as an entertainment product, the emotional side is really important. It's, it's, it's not just a specific uh, game mechanic or a feature in there it needs to be something that brings an emotional side for the player into the experience. So, so we are always asking, what do I feel when I am in this experience doing this? Obviously, you know, competition is tough and, and, and that's why the company brand and, and, and quality is very, very important. And you need to take that really, really kind of as a matter of patch of honor in a way. Uh, it's, you know, the wider audience you can find, the better, of course. You, you know, as, as a creator, I want as many people to be able to experience something that I create as possible. Uh, so, so making sure that the game side of it is not too hard for someone who is more of a casual player. Is, is important as well. Uh, and uh, we always, when we create a new game, we always look at it as something that's more than just a game. And, and that means that there is a planning and potential for sequels, you know, more of uh, uh, the things in the same world, but also transmedia. And, and, well, maybe the Max Payne movie is an example of that, uh, but, but also, you know, things like novels and graphic novels. And, and, and now in Quantum Break, we actually included a live action show into the package uh, from, from the beginning. Uh, as storytelling, uh, well, in stories, stories are usually about people and characters, and, and, and that is a very, very important starting point. Uh, uh, characters and story, who is the main character? And, and, and the character you, you are playing as the protagonist of, of this experience. And, and they're looking for inspiration in movies and TV uh, for, for techniques and for quality level. Uh, you know, uh, because, well, I mean, Look, looking at, for example, uh, the television series these days, and if you can even call them TV series anymore with, with HBO streaming and Netflix and things like that, uh, phenomenal stuff happening there, and the quality level is really, really high. So that's always a great source of inspiration and, and a place to go for, you know, learning. But yeah, because we create action games where, where 
there is a big conflict happening. Uh, motives and, and conflict in the characters is, is where it starts from and, 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 and how, we, how we kind of uh, create the foundation for, for what's happening in there. And, and that leads into action. Uh, as I mentioned already, the TV series, but, but we have been kind of, at Remedy, we are all fans of pop culture in different forms, movies and TV and books and, and other games, of course. But, but uh, actively looking for inspiration in, in, in those places. And the great thing about making games at you know, for, for me all these years has been that you can find something, a certain kind of a story, a certain kind of a theme or, or a type of a character uh, that's been used, say, in movies again and again and again to the level that it starts to feel tired and a cliché. But it might be that no one has taken that and made an interactive version of that where you get to be that character and you get to experience that character's dilemma and, and conflict and, and, and world. And suddenly you can kind of breathe in into that tired cliche, you can breathe new life and bring something new into the mix. And, and, and that kind of, you know, we've all heard it be said that, well, all the stories have already been told and, and everything has been already invented. And in some ways that, that feels like a true thing, truth. But then, you know, you are taking different components and mixing them up and doing your own interpretation and what, what it ends up being is suddenly something completely fresh and hopefully inspires some other creative somewhere else to do something new or a new combination of things. So the action side of it, uh, even there we look into movies because, you know, we want to make our action games look good, look cinematic, look movie-like. And, and, and so looking into movies, and I, I, I feel that Max Payne, our first action game, first big action game, was a good example of this. We were looking into uh, Hong Kong action movies. Uh, the director, John Wu, uh, was kind of the master of this. And, and there was this technique called bullet time, where you know, in the middle of action, time slows down and, and, and everything is exaggerated and, and you, you, you kind of have this hyper-real experience of that. And, and we were looking at that and thinking about, well, you know, that would kind of a, be a cool game mechanic that if the player could slow down time and, and, and have more reaction uh, time for, for, you know, this action moment. And we brought it as an interactive uh, element, very movie-like thing, but suddenly made in a game, it, it changed the thing. And, and, you know, as an anecdote of that, because it's always kind of luck is involved in all of these when it comes to what succeeds and what doesn't. Uh, the Matrix movies, which were huge. The first Matrix movie happened to come out half a year before Max Payne came out. And everybody was Matrix, Matrix, Matrix. And then suddenly Max Payne, as a game, came out and had this slow motion mechanic. Because Matrix really was, they were taking it from the Hong Kong movies, and we were taking it from the Hong Kong movies. They just happened to come out uh, half a year before and, and made the bullet time kind of uh, for, for Western pop culture, you know, known to everybody. But we, Remedy is also a technology company. We make our own tech. Sure, we, we use middleware, kind of uh, cer certain things we, we license as well. But traditionally, from the very beginning, we have always created the game engines uh, for our game on our own. Uh, that the graphic engines, the level um, uh, uh, creation, uh, and, 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 and the characters, and, and the tools. Uh, obviously, when you have your own engine, you need your own tools for the team to create the content. And that's, that is a big effort, and, and a lot of work uh, goes, goes into it. Uh, 
but but the cool thing that a possibility that it gives us is that we can focus on certain key things that that you can these days license very very good game engines and tools uh, to to create games uh, but but obviously they are not necessarily focused on the key areas that are really, really important for your specific vision. And creating your own technology allows us to focus on certain aspects. Uh, so Max Payne, it was the slow motion action. Alan Wake, which was a supernatural thriller. Uh, we focused on light and darkness and moving shadows. And, and then now in Quantum Break, we, we had this whole science fiction, fictional science of time breaking down and everything, kind of fictional science around time. Uh, and, and, and the other aspect that we were really, really focusing on was character technology. Uh, we wanted to push the idea of a digital double of an actor as far as we could, so that we could, we had Hollywood actors playing the roles and we wanted our in-game models of the characters and, and, and how they are presented to be as close one-to-one -to, -one to those actual actors as, as today's technology makes possible. Uh, one more thing uh, is the foundation of it. We, all of our games are set in fictional but still present day real world as it were you know if you look at games in general you you have a lot of games in all kinds of imaginary fantasy worlds and 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 you have ga games of sci-fi games of space marines in distant planets and and spaceships and and from the very beginning with 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 Max Payne it just felt that well you know if we are able to give the illusion that you are now in the present day real world that you know uh, and recognize. And, and sure, then because of the action, we do break it violently in some way, create a, a violent crisis of some sort. But, but just the emotional connection of starting from something that you recognize and, and, and can relate to then the crisis also has more emotional impact because then you know the world you are fighting to save or get back to. And, and the, the crisis elements we bring in different genres like, way, well, Max Payne could be called Pulp Fiction and, and Alan Wake had supernatural elements and now Quantum Break had sci-fi elements. But still, we always retain that foundation and, and grounding uh, uh, thing into the real world. Uh, and once again, I'll switch to something else. All right. So now I'm jumping to quantum break and, and, and talking a bit <coughs> quickly. <laughs> Uh, about the challenges, uh, you know, Quantum Break was the first big game project where my role had shifted from writer uh, into the role of creative director. So, so more a di directing role and more trying to oversee the whole thing. And, and, and at the same time, Quantum Break is by far the most complex and challenging and, and scale-wise the biggest uh, thing that we have ever done. So, so for me there was a lot of learning along the way. Uh, and, and I'm going to talk about the different uh, elements in Quantum Break uh, and, and a bit about what was challenging and, and how we maybe managed to solve that. So, you know, Looking at today's console games, and uh, they, they're called triple A games, uh, industry term. Uh, they, they are really, really huge undertakings. Uh, and, and 
you can see in the market that there are a lot of sequels which is understandable in the sense that it's once you have done the, all the groundwork then it's easier to do more episodes in a way uh, so so creating something from the scratch is always a lot of thinking a lot of work a lot of prototyping and um, as said, we, we were growing a lot. With, with Alan Wake, we had half the amount of people that we ended up having with, with Quantum Break, and it took us four years to create Quantum Break. Uh, and, and, and the sequel is a, is, a, is a good way of understanding that, that when you have a publisher who is funding the project, as we did Microsoft Studios, uh, innovation. Of course, everyone craves for innovation, but it's also a risk because it's an unknown. You don't know, you know what you'll end up with. Uh, it's, it's always a risk. And, and from a creator's perspective, it's wonderful to be given the trust that, that you get to invent something. A list of new things. So, so even one area in a really, really big project is always a risk. And, and, and with Quantum Break, we had a new platform, meaning that, that uh, there, there was a new generation of consoles that, that we were making this. We had never done a game for Xbox One. We had done a game to previous Xbox, which is Xbox 360. So it was new. Uh, obviously new IP, intellectual property, quantum break, figuring out what this actually is. And, and with that new gameplay loop, things that the player gets to do, a new story. Uh, and this time around we wanted to try something new, which means that the player gets to affect the story. They can make choices and the story changes based on those uh, things. Well style which might feel like a small thing but thinking about everything how you need to create a unique identity uh, there is a lot of work as i said we invested a lot into character technology to be able to create digital doubles of the actors uh, we created this whole fictional science of time manipulation and time breaking down which meant a lot of special effects to be invented. You know, brilliant guys doing months and months of work to, to come up with techniques of how do we, how do we visualize time breaking down and, and how does that look like. Uh, we had Hollywood actors for the first time, which does bring certain challenges and certain, you know, certain things needed to go different ways to make it possible new tools for all of this to be able to be created. Uh, and, and then we had a TV show, essentially, <coughs> coming on that same disc. And, and we had never done uh, a live action show. So, and not just that, but as said, kind of the emotional impact is that, you know, we wanted all of this to be something that serves to create a whole that's more than the sum of its parts. That, that somehow all of these different things click together uh, uh, to create something entertaining. And also, finally, one, one, one more challenge, which, you know, it was a time travel story, which as a story genre is notoriously hard to crack and, and, and time travel <laughs> as a concept you know, for us, for, for people, is always kind of a difficult topic because when you start thinking about the logic of people going back in time and, and w you know, w what happens from that, uh, there, there is a lot of story workshop to be done to make sure that it holds up and, and, and doesn't fall flat and isn't illogical and full of plot holes. So all of that... Uh, and, and even one thing is, you know, a risk. I'll show you a quick trailer of, of, of Quantum Break. Time is going to end. You have to trust me. For what? Complicated. 
indicated then. Our fate is laid out before us, Jack. Everything that happened to get us here, every sacrifice that was made, they're all a part of this path. They can't be changed. I don't know if we can let this live. So that's the that's a trailer of 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 want to break and gives you an impression of of kind of the 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 graphical fidelity and 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 the drama and and action. So uh, our goal essentially on the high level was to create a remedy game version of a Hollywood summer blockbuster movie. Obviously, this is a game. But, but, you know, this kind of a big, colorful spectacle, that, that an entertaining thrill ride. Uh, and, and as a theme, the idea was that time is breaking down. And it's also a superhero story where the main character gains these superpowers where he can affect time in various ways. And that's the power that the player gets. And, and uh, that's what you as a player are doing uh, through the experience, gaining more ways to manipulate time. Uh, and, and obviously kind of there is a link to Max Payne that, that bullet time already as an idea is time manipulation. And that gave us confidence that, that we, can, we can find a way and we can make this work and, and come up with something cool. Uh, couple of words about making games. It's an iterative process. I mean, uh, you, it's, it's always a prototype pr project, which makes it unpredictable. There, you are doing things that no one has ever done before. You have an idea, and then you start exploring and seeing if there is anything to that idea. And at least for me, you know, even after 21 years, Having an idea, there is no way to tell whether that will be fun and whether that will work uh, before you actually do a version and see it on screen and try it out and discover, is it fun, is it, is it really, really boring and stupid? Or, or, and, and, and then you go from that, maybe it gives you a new idea, and step by step you, you are honing in. Uh, so, so that's needed. And, 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 and at the same time, because you are aiming for uh, a whole that, that is very, very entertaining, it means that if you are doing exploration on multiple different areas, uh, if, if one thing changes, then in all likelihood it will end up affecting all the other things as well, which you know, adds chaos, adds unpredictability into it. Uh, and, and because we see ourselves as storytellers, it's important to us that there is this fiction uh, that, that kind of supports all of this and, and is wrapped around it so that it's a believable world. Even if there are fantastical things, it's still a believable world. Uh, we are having some... Yeah. Okay. And, and the other thing, I mean, a lot of people in the team making games are really, really creative people, which is wonderful. Uh, you don't have any shortage of ideas. Ideas are, of, often people kind of think that ideas are really precious. But, 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 you know, creating games or creating 
products, uh, there is no shortage of cool ideas. You, they, they, they will never run out. You will never run out of ideas. You will always have more and more and more. And, and, and <coughs> it's taking that idea, believing in that idea, doing a lot of hard work and iterating that idea, that's, that's the real work. <laughs> Uh, and, and the other thing about ideas is that when you have the initial idea, you, are, you haven't really explored it through. And, and in most likelihood, if you decide to do center something around an idea, it will grow into something bigger. It might seem like a small detail, but when you put a small sub-team, you know, give the idea to them and you guys work on this and make it good, they will soon have something that has ballooned into something much bigger because they are excited about it and they come up with new things uh, into it and, and so it keeps growing. And, and what you end up with is way too much content because you have all kinds of ideas and, and then you have brilliant people working on individual ideas and each of these ideas is, is growing and then you end up with well no one can ever make it no matter what the budget is which means that that there needs to be focus and and you need to be kind of relatively merciless uh, in 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 deciding what can go in and and what needs to stay out which of course that the killi killing of darlings there there is a lot of killing happening in in, in the creation uh, process uh, but you know the, the uh, kind of the, the hopeful aspect of it is is that no idea uh, is is necessarily dead once and for all when you abandon it. Uh, I, I I do think that certain aspects in all where that were in Max Payne kind of led into Alan Wake. And certain aspects that we had in Alan Wake that were cut out of the game ended up turning into Quantum Break. So, so it's, it's always, even if you abandon an idea, it might be that that idea will actually get a chance to shine and, and be much bigger and more important later on in another context. Uh, really quickly. <laughs> going through the idea, you know, the design idea of, of Quantum Break was that we'll have three layers of time travel. We have the actual gameplay, uh, then, then we have uh, the, the, the story layer, and then we have the interactive narrative layer. So I'll, I'll, I'll show you what the earliest prototypes of, of uh, time manipulation gameplay looked like, which was an idea that... Uh, you actually, in the action gameplay, you, you are traveling through time. You can rewind yourself back and then <laughs> side by side with yourself, you get to do more than you could otherwise. So here we are. Uh, we are recording your actions and now rewinding and now we are replaying your actions, but you are a free agent on the side doing a different thing. We tried that, uh, but we found that, well, you know, rewinding and doing things again is a repetitive thing. And, and the more you do it, the more you are actually just playing the, certain, the same thing again and again. I still think that in a different kind of a game, that would be fun. But, but this was meant to be, once again, a Hollywood action blockbuster, you know, non-stop going forward, fast-paced. Uh, so we abandoned that idea. We abandoned many, many other ideas uh, that, that we tried along the way and, and, and came up with certain kind of design philosophies, like, like we had the idea of time turns things up, not back which means that when you use your superpowers, it should make things more exciting. It shouldn't give you repetition. And, and also the goal was that, that compared to our previous games, we want more. We, we don't want just one power. We have 
multiple powers that the player can use all kinds of things. Many, many prototypes later, we had the set that we ended up with. So then, the interactive narrative side of it. Uh, we wanted the player to be able to make choices and, and change the story uh, in certain aspects. Uh, at the same time, we didn't want to veer into the idea of choose your own adventure, which I don't know how many of you remember those adventure books uh, back in the, what, 80s, 90s, where, where you know, you had this spider web of options and, and you got to pick your path through it uh, because the amount of content is huge. Uh, with this kind of graphical fidelity. We still wanted one story, uh, but the idea was one story told many ways. You get to affect certain aspects of it, fates of certain characters and, and certain events, but the beginning and the ending are always fixed. Uh, and, and the idea originally was that you travel back in time, you make a choice, and then you return to the present and things have changed, which is a used uh, thing in, in time travel fiction. But we also, when we set out, we didn't really have rules for our time travel. And, and very fast we kind of discovered that yeah, this is a mess if we don't come up with really strict rules and hold on to them. And, 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 and that led into you know, a lot of workshopping and, and uh, finally having a set that we were happy with. And, and the final design for junctions is that they actually happen in the present time and affect the future, not the past. Which made it easier for us. And, and the end result was cool in my, in my view. So finally, the story itself. Uh, rules needed. <laughs> Uh, and it's difficult. For, for Quantum Break, we had a writing team of four people, counting myself. I was kind of leading uh, the workshopping. We had three full-time uh, uh, screenwriters, one with a background in writing novels, one in games, and one in TV. And then on top of that, from our publisher's side, we had a team of multiple people, uh, kind of narrative people uh, who, who were involved in the process as well. And then when we got to the live action show, we had a few uh, screenwriters in Los Angeles working on the show. And all of this needed to stay logical and, 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 and whole, and, and time travel is difficult. <laughs> so, so there were so many times in our writing room which turned into this crazy scientist lab with all kinds of notes and post-its in the ceiling even. Uh, and, and when we were feeling confident that now we have figured this out, now it works, you know, one of us would go pale and go, uh-oh, and everybody would groan and, and what is it? And they would explain that, look guys, if we do it this way and this happens, then you know, it's broken and everybody suddenly sees it. Why didn't we see it a week ago? But now we see it and, and it's back to the drawing board and figuring it out again and picking up the pieces. Months of work like that. Uh, and, and also the goal was that we want it to feel smart and entertaining, but not difficult because there are examples of, of time travel stories that are really, really difficult. Uh, so more Back to the Future and the Terminator than Primer. Not sure how many of you are familiar with Primer. Really cool movie. I don't know what happens. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so plot holes and, and, and you know, coming up with rules. This, we wanted this to be a kind of modern techno thriller. So no going back to kill Hitler, no, no dinosaurs, which can be fun in time travel stories, but not in this time travel story. And, and, and we even hired Tsuksu Rasanen uh, uh, as a consultant, uh, kind of he has worked in CERN and, and, and knows a lot of, knows his physics. Uh, and, and we explained all our crazy ideas to him and he very matter-of-factly started 
picking them apart and explaining to us how you know modern classical physics or or quantum physics see these things currently and and what would maybe be possible and then we took his feedback and iterated our thing and I'm, I'm i'm sure that it's you know he hasn't looked at the final thing i think uh i'm I, i'm sure that he would be like uh, but but we were happy with it uh so so evolution of the story just you know tv is a big source of inspiration for us we want episodic it it didn't wasn't released episodically it's it's all on one disc but but the idea is that there are episodes inside it you play through an episode and there is a cliffhanger that that makes you want to go on and and and, and there is a recap at the beginning of the next episode. So TV is a formula for us that we were already using with Alan Wake. Uh, so, so trying to perfect that. And, and, and we have our main, uh, ma main character, Jack, but we have an ensemble cast of other characters, uh, other important characters around him. Uh, and, and early on, once again, too many ideas, too much content, and, and, and needed to find the key and focus. And, and it was Jack's journey. And, and that is a superhero origin story. He gains these fantastical powers. He needs to understand the responsibility that comes with it and come to grasp with, you know, how to use them to, to survive and, 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 and beat the enemy. And, and very much, once again, pop culture drawing from classics like Spider-Man's origin story. Uh, and, and we have Jack, our main character, we have his older brother Will, who is the inventor of time travel uh, in, in, in this world, and we have Paul, who is Jack's best friend, but because of time travel turns into his worst enemy. So, so kind of very classical, kind of Shakespearean uh, elements, and, 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 and then just running with that. Mending a broken family, uh, best friends turn mortal <laughs> enemies. Uh, and, and as said, with a lot of content early on, we had f four playable characters, you know, uh, and, and scaled it down to just Jack, uh, with one exception that I'll go into now. So, so the junctions, we were calling our moments of choice for the player junctions in time. And, and, and we gave that power to our main bad guy, Paul Serene, who, who used to be Chuck's best friend, but now is his enemy. So when you get to a junction moment, which is always the last thing in an episode in this experience, you actually play the bad guy, the villain, because he is the most powerful guy and he can manipulate time. Uh, so, so you get to play him and you make a choice which of these two competing futures comes to be the reality in your quantum break experience. Which gives it nice layering and interesting kind of dynamics because on one hand you're rooting for Jack and you want Jack to succeed and you are seeing certain glimpses of both potential futures and maybe you want to make sure that Jack gets off easy. But now you are playing the bad guy and, and we are trying to give you understanding of who he is and why he is doing this. So maybe you want to role play him and make the smartest choice that he can make. And there are all kinds of no right and wrong, but the player gets to think about these things. Uh, so it, it was kind of our action movie moment made interactive where in a good action movie you are, the bad guy is really interesting and tasty and almost comes close to stealing the show and, and, and you love seeing him making his moves. Uh, also, to add the complexity, the junction moment is a bridge between the game and the show. So how the experience goes is you play through an episode of the game, you make a choice at the end, and after that we unlock an episode of the show, and you get to watch an episode of the live action show, which is about what's happening in the enemy camp. So, so Paul Serene has founded this big corporation called Monarch Solutions and, and there is all kinds of things happening uh, inside Monarch Solutions and in the show we see that power struggle. We follow what's happening in the enemy camp. Uh, so 
I'll show you what the player sees in a junction moment before making a choice. Any potential threats to our plan need to be erased. I dug through the area and I found everything I could on this room. This is messed up, man. I trust in Mono. So that was out of the two potential futures, one future. So, so you get to see glimpses of both and then you make your choice. This is to show you some of the complexities in the project. We, we created a chart of our time travel. So this is a timeline going forward. This is the actual uh, way the characters move with time travel <laughs> through it. Uh, this is a chart of our uh, game levels and episodes and, and all the different components and elements, how they are present, how it's how, how does the pacing between storytelling and action and, and adventuring work? The kind of the intensity curve of, of you know, what the player should be feeling, what are the location, what is the time of day, which characters are present, which are not. Just kind of the final visualization we had for the, for the content that we were creating. Just to show you quite a few different elements going on. Uh, as I said, style is a big thing uh, in, in it, finding the visual style. We wanted the modern techno thriller. Uh, we were inventing all kinds of elements like time ending and, and, and how does that manifest when time is stuttering and, and freezing. And we had superpowers and we have junctions in time. We have time machines and, and, and all of this made up technology and all of it kind of needed to feel parts of the same family but still different things uh, and and just the concept of well, what does time look like what, what does it look like when time breaks down and inventing all of that and contrast between time flowing normally time broken down uh, we, we started from frozen scenes, where if time breaks, then everything freezes. But that felt boring after a while. <laughs> Nothing was happening. So, so we wanted to add an element of danger of all things in broken timelines, violently, you know, going back and forth and looking for all kinds of inspirations like, like cubisms and glitch art and, and long exposure photos and... and and, and, and things like that, and then created the technology to create that in the game engine. And, and then we had Monarch, Monarch Solutions, the this big corporation, and we wanted it to feel like a real corporation. So we actually hired Nimeo, which is a company in Finland, uh, who does company branding. And, and, and we wanted to create a realistic, you know, uh, Bible for, for how does this company look like. <laughs> And, 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 and all the way to what kind of architecture they have and, and how does that reflect the, the research work on time technology that they have. And inspiration was NASA and CERN. And, and we wanted, even if it's fantastical time travel, time technology, we wanted to make it look like that if this was reality, uh, this technology could exist uh, in the present day world. So cast then, uh, <laughs> and this is from a mo motion capture shoot. You, you can hear, see a motion capture uh, uh, studio in, in the background, which is, you know, and, 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 and you can see motion capture cameras uh, up there. And, and here is our trio, main cast, uh, in motion capture suits, which are these spandex suits with these balls that, that uh, are, are tracked by the cameras to, to capture the movement. We have Sean Asmore, uh, uh, a leading man, uh, Jack, uh, 
you might have seen him in the X-Men movies as Iceman or in the following the TV series. We have Dominic Monaghan. You might know him as one of the hobbits in Lord of the Rings. Uh, and, 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 and then we have Aidan Gillen, who in Game of Thrones is, is the little finger. Uh, so, so Hollywood aspects uh, came in, uh, which was wonderful to, to get the funding to, to be able to work with this kind of talent uh, in it. Obviously, we were kind of nervous to begin with, that, that are these guys who are used to working on, on, on movies and TV, how, how do they see working in video games? Is, is it a side project or something? Because we knew that it's going to be a lot of work for them. <laughs> uh, but, you know, they are really, really dedicated and hardcore professionals, all of them. And, and what was really interesting was also that they wanted to learn to understand the technology, which is one sign of what we knew from be before, that, that uh, games of this scale and movies are actually step by step coming closer together when it comes to the techniques of how the content is created, the tools that are used for creating it, and, and obviously these guys understand it and, and you know, either they already have experienced it or they can experience it in their next movie, that maybe they need to do motion capture as well for, for, for that. So they were really eager to work hard and, and, and learn. So yeah, Sean and, uh, and, and, and the casting process, as it probably is in movies and TV, is kind of a waterfall that when you nail down one part of it, for example, we had locked down that Sean Asmore is our main character, uh, then his brother, William, obviously needs to look convincingly like a brother. And from there came the idea of hiring Dominic Monaghan. And luckily, we got him and, well, discovered that they have actually worked together and are friends. So, and, and Lance Reddick as well, and, and, and Patrick Heisinger, who is the bad guy in the next Tom Cruise movie, and, and big names. Uh, how are we with time? Are we, we are actually almost one. <laughs> no, right. uh, with storytelling, we have used different mediums uh, in games. It's, it's, it's kind of a thing that because games are changing and, and, and all the time there are no rules. You make up your own rules. And, and we have brought in other mediums into games and made them part of the game. In Max Payne, we were using graphic novel as storytelling. In Alan Wake, we, you know, Alan Wake is a, this writer whose fiction starts to come real. And, and, and he's writing a novel and you are actually reading pages of his novel inside the game. And, 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 and the other part of it is that in our games, because we are trying to create a convincing real world, all of these different mediums are present in our lives. So they need to be present in that fictional present day setting. So from Max Payne on, we've had these TV series and radio programs inside the game world that you can stop uh, by a TV, turn it on and watch a show. Um, obviously, kind of not exactly HBO quality back in the Max Payne days, just still frames with, with kind of a radio play voiceovers. But then in Alan Wake, we actually had live action content already. And, and, and from that, it kind of felt a logical step with Quantum Break to bring in an actual live action show. Uh, I'm going to show you the trailer of the show. <laughs> Up into the past. I tried to change things. Undo mistakes. Only to find there's no changing the inevitable. Time is just one closed loop. No matter what I do, you and I, we always end up here. And no matter what I do, Man. 
for some reason this is clipping all the all the videos just a couple of seconds short but no 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 matter yeah, yeah okay that's a glimpse of the show uh, side by side going side by side with the game we had four episodes which is kind of like 22 25 minute episodes and because we were shooting alternate content because the show is affected by the player's choices, there are actually around 48 versions of this show. Some of the changes are really minor and small. Some of them are whole scenes and, and certain characters dying or, or, you know, things happening very, very differently. So there is quite a lot of content <laughs> and, and you only get to see one version based on the choices you make in the game. Obviously you can go and play again with different choices. The f initial plan was uh, to make them more separate, but then, you know, to me the ambition felt like, well, but that's been done and, and, and we have an opportunity to do something <laughs> really unique here and no one has done a combination like this and, and so step by step we were bringing them closer and closer and closer together so that we have the same characters weaving in on the game side into the show and, and back again. We have same locations that, that were created uh, for the show, uh, kind of built, uh, 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 built sets uh, based on the game graphics. That we created a virtual location then the people on the show side took that and built it for real so that they could shoot a show there. Uh, and even in certain scenes, you, you, you get to play a certain scene uh, and, and, and kind of see it from a different perspective on the show side. Uh, and as said, the game is Chuck's hero's journey. The show is about the bad guy. And, and, and obviously in modern TV you can see a lot of interesting, tasty, flawed characters, almost like following bad guys. Uh, obviously it was kind of challenging to, to create all of these crossovers. Uh, and, and the iterative process of making a game and, and how a live action show is made are very different things. Because usually when you create a show, yes, you iterate on the screenplay level. But once you start building, you are on a really, really rigid schedule. And then it's done, and then it's edited, and then, then it's ready. Uh, so, so figuring out the way to bring these models <laughs> together, which was to shoot the show as late in the process as possible. Uh, and, and just as an anecdote, once again, funny things happened along the way. Uh, what, you know, when they were looking at our virtual locations, sometimes they were not finished. And sometimes, you know, for someone outside, it's not obvious what's final and what's not. We have a technique called white boxing, which is we create a rough version of the location that's, you know, just no, no surface textures. This would be just a blank white sheet, as an example. And, and we had one we had this one lamp in a location that was very much to us obviously a placeholder you know for the actual final lamp but they were looking at it and they were going like oh interesting design lamp here <laughs> and they actually built it for real and I'm, I'm just showing you a clip and, and so here, here we have our white boxed lamp which they built for real and, and put into the show and, and it's, it remained there. It, it, it was kind of a funny thing. Uh, uh, yeah, we don't have to watch that long. <laughs> but just as, an, uh, uh, just as an example of, of, of these kind of funny things happen along the way. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> the, the, this is a quote from, from uh, Forbes magazine uh, review uh, of, of <laughs> Quantum Break, which I kind of liked. Uh, those crazy fools actually did it. Uh, th there was quite a lot of skepticism. Um, can't be blamed. 
uh, along the way of, you know, can they pull off a game and a show and can they make them work together and, and, and things like they, uh, Dave in Forbes felt that we actually managed to do it in a, in a satisfying manner. And this was the headline for, the, for, for his review piece. Thank you. <laughs> question you are in you are in a hit business and uh, uh, what is the strategy for hit, hit business is it uh, to uh, hook up with uh, Microsoft and uh, get uh, like a recording contract uh, with some big uh, distributor or uh, how how is it that uh, this cannot be done by easy uh, well, very easily and uh, with cheap cheap uh, uh, without funding so how, yeah what is your strategy in this hit, hit business hit market well, clearly from an uh, independent developer's perspective, uh, partners are really, really important and essential. Uh, the not going into detailed numbers, not even, I don't even know the exact numbers, but <coughs> the, the budget of Quantum Break is comparable to a relatively big Hollywood movie. So tens of thousands, uh, tens of millions of uh, dollars. Uh, Obviously, you need a partner who funds it. And, and Quantum Break as uh, an IP is owned by Microsoft. So we created it for them. Uh, and, and that's, you know, they have their own strategical uh, goals. Uh, and and, and they, they create the platform. They, their platform is, is Xbox. And, and, and they want exclusive, high quality exclusive content for their console, which in turn then <coughs> makes their console more attractive to gamers. And, and, and that's, that is a strategy from, from partnership with, with Microsoft that, that you, know, you get the funding, you get the support, uh, and, and then you are exclusively creating content for their platform. I do have a really <laughs> loud voice. But. Uh, okay, exclusively to uh, exclusively to uh, Microsoft, but there have been ports in the past. Will I'm a PC guy, as you know it from the box, uh, not a, a console muppet. Will there will I be able to play Quantum Break in sometime in the future? Yeah, yeah. I mean it. it it already came simultaneously to Windows 10, which is Microsoft's uh, initiative for, <laughs> for, for games. Uh, but, but now, kind of several months later, it's, it's also coming out for Steam. Uh, so, yes, you will. Okay, uh, another sort of a fan, fan question. Looking in, in the past, Max Payne, really, really a big fan. Uh, uh, it seems sort of perfect for its time, 2001. It, it's nothing comparable. Half Life is comparable. That was that was Thank you. as well. Uh, <laughs> looking back, you as as a maker of that game, what could have done been done differently, better, with Max Payne, the first first episode? I'm sure there are lots. You you look look at it differently than me, but uh, sure. I mean, I don't know. I. As a creative person, you, you are really, really close to it, especially close to the end. You, you kind of polishing and iterating, and, and when, when it's <coughs> taken from your hands, which always inevitably happens, like you are like, but I want to fix that thing and, and, and this thing, and that's horrible, and, 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 and then you know, someone comes in and says that we are out of time, and, and it's good enough. And, it, and, and then later on, obviously, looking at it, you notice that, well, I was thinking that that particular one line of dialogue is hugely crucial, and it didn't go in. It's not needed at all. Obviously, you'll get perspective, but at a certain point, you are totally blind to it and just, you know, trying to get it done. So I don't know. I, you know, afterwards, I'm hugely proud of, of the games that we have 
made and hugely proud of the team and 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 sometimes you know in the final pro product you don't see all the struggles along the way or certain compromises needed to be made for it to happen and and that makes me as the maker even more proud you know no one will know and and no one really cares but knowing how difficult this thing was to achieve you know you 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 can't help but to be proud of it and and i don't know i i kind of feel that that it's it's useless to look back and uh, you know after a certain time how one small detail perhaps the cut scenes where they're really planned or where they where they're a budget thing uh, the, the the graphic novels the uh, yeah yeah, sort of comic book graphic novels. I mean, that, that, that came from multiple directions. I'm a huge graphic novel fan myself. So, so I, I, I brought this idea on the table. How about if we use graphic novel? And, and back then, you know, in the late 90s when we were making it, looking at animation and, and, and cutscenes as they are seen in today's games, they were really, really crude and, and, and really simple things could be done and, and, and it just felt like that if we go that way we'll get a lot, of, lot less and, and to me graphic novel felt like a clever way of telling much more story and more ambitious story than we could have done with, with the game engine back then. Very quick question, I want to push you a little bit so your take on esports and free to play well, I mean, things are evolving, and, and, and with the games, they are evolving quite fast. Uh, I, you know, working in the industry, I, I think it's exciting when a new thing comes in and, and kind of is a success. And I, I feel that that means that the industry stays healthy and, and is going somewhere and new things are happening and new people are coming in and, and new audiences are, are coming in. So, so all of that is, is great and, and it, it might not be exactly what we are doing or have done in the past but I, it's, it's hard to me to see how that would be away from this and, and not actually <coughs> giving somewhere down the line opportunities to, to kind of bringing new elements. Um, hello, big Max Payne fans. Um, so it's kind of weird to see you here because you're also <laughs> the face of Max Payne. So I just wonder, how did that happen? Why did you get chosen? Like, like, like many things back then, it, you know, we were just making it up as we went. It, 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 it wasn't really a re very kind of carefully thought or planned out process. Young guys eager to leave their mark and do cool, cool stuff. And, and, and I kind of looking back, I, it, 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 it was almost like an accident. I, I was pitching in the graphic novel that let's do it this way. I, I was bringing in, I, I was playing a lot of tabletop role-playing games and, and, and um, I was in a, at Helsinki University's uh, role-playing association. Uh, they, they had this kind of a publication magazine and, and uh, I, I had posed in a couple of uh, photos, you know, with guns looking bad, trying to look bad uh, for, for, for a game there. And, and also with our role-playing game group, we had, you know, posed with, you know, as our characters. I brought some of those photos in and, and showed them and said that we could, you know, use this as the idea for the graphic novel, you know, something like this. And, and I happened to be pos posing in those photos and, and people in the team back then were like, okay, let's do it. And, and since you are here, you know, you can be in that as well. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, let's do it. And, and, but, but you have to kind of realize that back then, you know, it was like 96, 97 when, when this idea came to be. And, and the graphics were not at all what they ended up being in Max Payne. Uh, 
the first idea for the graphic novel was that our artist Kia Kallio uh, actually hand paints with watercolors and inks every single graphic novel panel. And, and also if you looked at the models in the game, the textures on the models were also essentially hand drawn. And, and the looks in the games back then were very much different. Then a couple of years forward we started to realize that hey, for textures you could actually use actual photos. And that would bring in, you know, a big leap in, in believability and realism. And, and it wasn't a kind of a slam dunk idea because a lot of the artists back then in the team were like, yeah, no, that's cheating. We, we can't, you know, that's, that's breaking the rules in a way. But finally we ended up with that. And, and, and you can actually recognize me as Max Payne in the, in the final product. But you know, when, when the decision was made, that wasn't the case. And if I hadn't knew, known, I don't know if it would have come like, yeah, okay. <laughs> but but that's, that's how it went. Okay. You've been really generous with your time. <laughs> I know you have to leave already, so we'll call it uh, an end here. So a big, huge thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This was fun. Thanks, everyone.